Hello, booktube. Well, it's a bleak and barren Sunday when no books have come in the mail for Steve. And I would think that these incessant mail hauls that we're doing might be acquainting some of you with just how awful that is when you wake up first thing in the morning, in my case, 3.15 in the morning, and realize that nothing is going to come in the mail. No books, no packages to open. It, I know it's a first world problem, <laughs> but it's still pretty grim. <laughs> uh, so, as usual, I thought I would console myself with a tag. I found an heirloom tag, something something old, <laughs> uh, from years ago, called the Netflix book tag. Uh, and Sundays, because there are no new books in the mail, and uh, because there's nothing to do, really, I didn't go anywhere on Sundays. Uh, I would have gone anywhere today, anyway, since uh, you know, a quarter of a million people <laughs> protesting in Boston. Uh Sundays tend to be the day when I watch Netflix if I'm going to watch it at all. That's what brought the thing to mind. Uh, so I did it, and it's clever. It's Netflix-themed questions. <laughs> we just go through them. Uh, starting with number one, recently watched uh, the last book that you finished, which is something we've seen on this channel. I just read it last night. It's uh, Art and Celebrity by Heather McPherson, and it is wonderful. <laughs> I don't really know... Uh, I mean, this thing's... I haven't checked. This thing's expensive. It's probably... Seventy dollars. I don't really know what the, who the audience for these things is. I really don't. This is a, uh, I probably uh, what have we got here? Oh no, this is ninety dollars. <laughs> uh, and I don't, I don't know. Uh, I it wasn't really clear to me when reading the book if this is a companion to some sort of ongoing exhibit somewhere. Uh, but chances are, even if it is, and you're in America and you're you're in a bookstore, you won't be in the city where the exhibit is. And even and if it isn't an exhibit, then. I honestly don't know who the audience would be for a $90 hardcover about art history. Uh, maybe the university has an endowment. This, this, is, uh, this is Pennsylvania State University Press. Maybe they have an endowment or something or other so that maybe they're not facing a need for this book to make money. But it, it, was, it was tremendously good. It was more than just an art monograph. It deserves a wider audience. And I, that's what got me thinking about what kind of audience it can expect. I honestly don't know. Uh, I, the author knows her subject really well. She's a really good writer, but I, I don't know. I think you would probably have to have a bit of a grounding to really get the most out of the book. You'd certainly have to be familiar with the, with the modes of artwork because she doesn't go into that at all. <laughs> it's tricky. It's one of the subjects I come up, one of the book subjects I come up with uh, often in my reading. I will finish something that's really good and just flat out objectively realize that I don't know who to recommend it to. <laughs> and that's a, that's a little melancholy. <laughs> but anyway, that was the last book that I finished. Uh, question number two, top picks. Uh, books recommended based on your previously read. <laughs> and this, is, this would be the electronic version of what happens on Netflix when that, when you have the, because you watch such and such. And unfortunately, uh, I'm not, those algorithms aren't really good with me. <laughs> uh, I, I don't think I'm the, the kind of reader that they were built to predict. Uh, for instance, uh, in the, the iBook store where I do a lot of my reading, the, the last book that was recommended to me as something that I would probably like was The Warden by Anthony Trollope. I'll have to give that a try. <laughs> uh, so we'll move on to number three. Uh, recently added, uh, the last book that you bought... Uh, and for me, I, I don't have it here. I'm bracketed with dogs, or, or, and I don't have it with me, but it's, it's Headlong Flight by Dayton Ward. It's a, sci a brand new Star Trek novel, a next generation Star Trek novel. Uh, I'm no big fan of the next generation as a Star Trek series on TV, and this novel very wisely splits the action between all the boring people on the Enterprise and Lieutenant Worf, <laughs> who's, who's sent down to a planet and, and has adventures there. Uh, so... Uh, I, I just bought it. I haven't read it yet. I'll read it tonight. I'm not, my hopes aren't high. I won't give it much time. Uh, it could surprise me. You never know. Uh, then question number four, uh, popular on Netflix. This one gave me uh, trouble and I drew a blank. It was uh, books that everyone knows about, two that you've read and two that you have no interest in reading. And I, I, I'm sort of baffled by that. Again, I'm not 100% sure that I'm the kind of person the kind of reader that this question is really for. I'm, I'd, I'd like to think that books that, that uh, what, how's it go? Everyone knows about, I have already read. Uh, and the, of the ones that I haven't, if, if there are some that I haven't, that 
that are gaining popular traction, that are in the New York Times book review, that are, that are starting to get talked about or become memes on their own, I would like to think there are none that I have no interest in reading. Right? I mean, it's, it's my passion and my profession. If I look at something like that, so what's, a, what's an example? Well, it's hard for me to think of an example because there aren't, I can't, it's hard to think of an example of a book that has become popular that I didn't read before. Uh, but let's say, for instance, that I hadn't been banging the drum about the Knicks forever and ever. And now people are, you know, for a while there people were talking about it. Or uh, City on Fire by Garth Risk Halberg. If, if I read those things months before they were available in bookstores and, and thought they were really, really good. If I hadn't read them beforehand and then they had been in bookstores and everybody had been talking about them, I'd like to think I wouldn't, uh, the, there's no chance that I wouldn't have been interested in reading them. Um, apart from the number of, in, of subject areas of interest of mine, that also is just a free-floating subject area of mine, books that snag the popular imagination, those I am inherently curious about. So I, I tend to read them. I don't, I don't think I have answers for these. Uh, and we're, there's another one a little later on where that same thing happens. But uh, let's move on to uh, number five, comedies, a funny book. I have one in mind, I have many in mind, of course, but the one that came to mind when I was, when I was writing out my answers here was The Pirates uh, by George MacDonald Frazier, the author of the Flashman series. Now, the Flashman series is hilarious anyway. They're historical novels uh, about a character named Flashman who, who bungles his way through most of the 19th century, uh, constantly affecting, constantly being caught at the, at the peak moments of history and constantly affecting them in the worst ways possible. Uh, the Pirates is not a Flashman novel. It, it's just a historical novel about pirates that also is a, a, a tremendous send-up of pirate novels. <laughs> it's, uh, it's quite enjoyable. <laughs> uh, and also with a, a an opening paragraph that is simply bravura. Just you want to you want to stop when the opening paragraph alone is done. You want to stop, stand up and applaud. <laughs> uh, 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 let's see here. Question number six. Uh, dramas. A character who is a drama queen. I, I, I drew a blank. I, I, I think because there's a part of my mind that's resisting the question because the question is in part implying that characters in books are real people. Uh, I, I don't know. <laughs> Some killjoy answer like that. It just, it did, I drew a complete blank on this one. So we'll just, we'll just move on. Uh, number seven is animated. A book with cartoons on the cover. And I have one in mind, also a recent read. It's this, Golden Legacy. It's a celebration of the little golden books, the the kids book series from from uh, years ago, and uh, it's it's a celebration of them. You get and and all this is the, this was the series that did the archetypal little golden book, the pokey little puppy, uh, and it's not just a celebration of it; it's also a history of it, and I. It is fantastic. <laughs> Again, I have no idea who the audience would be. This is, this is. A forty dollar hardcover book history. I, I I don't know who you would get this for, uh, and I I I just it just kills me to think people walking into a bookstore and, and paying forty dollars for it. But uh, I can't recommend it highly enough. If you love these things, little golden books, or have a soft spot for them in your in your heart, you couldn't do better than to get this book <laughs> because the the narrative of the history is really really well done. Uh, and I'm very pleased to announce that uh, I will be reviewing it for the Christian Science Monitor. It, it, uh, it, its appearance in the Sacred Book Room just summarily bumped the weakest, the weakest prospect from February. It's just too good not to write about. So I, I will, I will be getting a chance to to stretch my legs on it uh, for 850 words, which is very nice. <laughs> uh, uh, and then let's see here, number eight. Uh, watch it again. A book or series that you want to reread. For me, it's a book. Uh, it's And Quiet Flows the Dawn uh, by Mikhail Sholokhov. Uh, I'm probably, I'm not giving that the olive pronunciation, but uh, it's a gigantic novel about the Cossacks. Uh, and it uh, has had some English translations, an, an old paperback and an old penguin. Uh, but the one that I want is, uh, the translator is Robert Daglish. And it's, it's unabridged. And it's, it's just this enormous chunker of a hardcover. And it drives me nuts. A couple of years ago, I found that hardcover at the Brattle. And I, 
I got it and I was all enthused about it and I thought, you know, I this is an undertaking even for me, so I will I will set aside a weekend for it and I don't know what happened to that volume. It, I must have accidentally put it on a pile for resale and it must have eventually gone back into the brattle. It's disappeared into the wilds and I <laughs> I will wait. It will show up again at the brattle. But uh but uh I don't want to read any other And Quiet Flows the Dawn. That one, even with the little glancing uh, touch of it that I had, struck me as the English language translation to read if I'm going to read anything. And I want to do that, so I will just wait. <laughs> uh, uh, and then let's see here. Question number nine, documentaries. Uh, a nonfiction book that you'd recommend to anyone. <laughs> now, since since I love nonfiction a lot more than I love fiction, I thought I would recommend two. <laughs> the first one is uh, is one that that I've mentioned on this channel before. It's the Red Hourglass uh, by Gordon Grice. Just it's, it's a slim little thing. It's and it's about uh, poisonous animals, <laughs> specifically insects and snakes, uh, and it's hurdles along the reading of it just hurdles along it's an amazing reading experience it doesn't take long uh and as i think i've mentioned on this channel before the chapter on the brown recluse spider will change your life <laughs> uh, but the second one i want to recommend is much bigger and much more ambitious but it's also brilliant absolutely brilliant it's james glyke's the information uh the big book about the meaning and nature of technology including the tsunami of technology that has been cresting for the last 15 years. And I get a lot of, as you've seen on this channel, I get a lot of those books in the mail. And a lot of them are anile and timid and reductive and, you know, boring. A lot of them are boring. They don't convey anything like the sheer excitement of that deluge, no matter how frightening it is. And uh, this book, oh... It's incredible. <laughs> it really is. It's, it reminded me of The Ancestors' Tale by Richard Dawkins. It's that kind of a book where there's something incredibly thought-provoking on literally every page. Uh, so I highly recommend it if you find it. And, you know, <laughs> you won't be surprised to hear this, but it's another book that I don't have. And I'm, I'm just patiently waiting for hardcover to show up at the Brattle. Probably my own from the bowels of the shop. <laughs> No idea what well, how I get rid of these books that I really like. I really don't know how I do it, <laughs> but uh, I highly recommend both of those. They they are nonfiction books that you don't have to like nonfiction to love. Uh, and then question number ten: uh, action adventure, an action packed book. Uh, I'm I'm gonna go a little bit native on you here, and I'm gonna I'm gonna suggest Adrian McKinty's Dead I Well May Be. It's a it's a thin Irish noir novel, a fresh off the boat Irish boy comes to new york in the very worst part of new york history the the the, the pre-law and order days of new york history of modern new york history and falls in with an irish crime lord and does all sorts of unspeakable things with bags full of doorknobs <laughs> and and leads a, a a scabby picaresque life of it's not very joyful it's an intensely irish book <laughs> uh, and he sleeps with the wrong woman and he gets in trouble with the wrong people and he exacts the wrong kind of revenge lives the wrong kind of life it's just just amazing for the action. It never stops. Uh, and let's see here. Uh, question number 11. Uh, new releases. A uh, book you can't wait to read. Uh, and I can't wait to read it, but I also don't want to read it. Uh, it's, it's The Painted Queen by Elizabeth Peters. And it comes out, I think, in the summer, late in the summer. And it's... It's the last Amelia Peabody adventure. It's the last time we will ever visit her and her dashing husband and her dashing children <laughs> and all the adventures that they have in, in Egypt, uh, studying ancient Egypt archaeology. It, it, it seems impossible to me that the series is going to end. It seems impossible that we're never going to get another adventure of Amelia Peabody. But I also agree that series like that should end. Their writers should end them. Uh, I mean, I mean, the PBI's had a really good run. That has hardly been a bad book in, what, two dozen? So The Painted Queen is what I'm looking forward to. Oh, I, I, I will probably fall on it and consume it immediately when I get the ARC. Uh, and that's it. That is the Netflix book tag. Uh, and it's, it's old as a hill, so I'm sure you've all done it before. So instead of tagging people, I wanted to give you Netflix recommendations. <laughs> Just a few. Uh, of, I want to recommend a few 
things on Netflix right now that that will please you that you, you absolutely cannot go wrong with them uh, and the first one is based on a book series it's Longmire uh, based on on the the, the uh, uh, murder murder thriller series set in the American West uh, it's it stars Robert Taylor and all I would I, mean, I think I think two seasons of it are on Netflix all I would suggest to you go to season one and watch the first episode that's all if you can watch the first episode of the first season of Longmire and finish saying, I don't really need to see any other episodes, my hat's off to you. <laughs> I don't think you'll be able to do that. <laughs> uh, number two is uh, the greatest documentary ever made. David Attenborough's Planet Earth is on Netflix. Now, Netflix costs $8 a month to do. You can show it on any kind of screen technology that you have. You can do it at any time, at any leisure. You don't have to be kind and rewind. You don't have to trek to a store. It's all there for you. And this is an unbelievably eye-opening thing. Just an unbelievable work of art on the planet where you live. And the planet where, as far as we know, is the only home of life anywhere in the universe. It's never had a greater portrait than this thing this staggering thing and it's there for you at any time so i highly recommend it put in the time it's an investment of time it's a long documentary put in the time and watch it it will change you it will broaden you it's amazing <laughs> uh, and the third thing <laughs> it go from the sublime to the ridiculous it's a comedy series also an investment of time but if you haven't seen it but you've only heard people talk about it and you're not sure it's for you Give it a try. It's Arrested Development. It's Ron Howard's Arrested Development. <laughs> I didn't think it was for me at all when I first heard about it. I didn't think it was for me at all when I watched the first two or three episodes. But <laughs> after a while, the Bluth family grows on you. And then <laughs> I predict you'll like it. <laughs> uh, and then uh, the uh, uh, next one is it, it's probably in the kids category of Netflix. It's, it's Mike Mitchell's movie Sky High about a teenage boy who, who's the son of famous superheroes. He appears to have no superpowers, and he's going to a high school for the children of superpowered beings, heroes and villains. Uh, and it's his adventures there, and it's really, really good. <laughs> it's, it sounds very silly. It is very one-dimensional. It also has... <laughs> it has the very flexible Stephen Strait as the bad boy, War and Peace. <laughs> Uh, and it has a heck of a smile-inducing ending. So I, it, it's it's light fare, it's it's family fare, it, and you will love it. <laughs> and it also gives uh, Linda Carter, the 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 Wonder Woman of the seventies, uh, just fantastic parting shot line. That's <laughs> just a, she she must have been very happy that the writers were willing to do that for her. Uh, then the, the next one is a it's a big heavy drama. It was incredibly popular in its day. You might see it and think, oh. I don't know. It's Amadeus, uh, the movie based on the Peter Schaefer play, and it's it's really really good. It's the only good performance that's ever, that anyone's ever been able to drag out of Tom Hulse, and it's uh, it's got F. Murray Abraham. Just the job he does is as as the the weak willed and evil Salieri is just amazing, just just incredible. It it will grip you right away. It doesn't. It, it looks on the surface like a big portentous Hollywood movie but it doesn't watch that way at all uh and the last thing i want to mention last thing i want to recommend on netflix right now the best thing on netflix right now by a wide margin <laughs> the only thing on netflix right now the thing that is the most sublime the thing that is the most perfect is lilo and stitch now if you haven't seen it cancel your reading plans and watch it <laughs> That's, that's all I have to say. That's uh, I, I'm going to end on the highest of all possible notes. If you haven't seen Lilo and Stitch, see Lilo and Stitch. <laughs> uh, and that's it. That is the Netflix book tag with recommendations on Netflix. <laughs> and and uh, I'll be back to receiving books tomorrow, I hope. And then we'll be back in the swim of things. So until then, uh, thank you, Booktube.